Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the enzyme in the course Enzyme Science and Technology. And in this current module, we are discussing about the uh, application of enzyme into the uh, into the different uh, fields which are required for the human welfare. So what we have discussed, we have discussed that the enzymes are required for the development of vaccines, enzymes are required for development of transgenic animals, medicines, genetically modified organisms, enzymes are also playing very crucial role in developing the different types of products related to the agriculture and as well as the pisciculture. And in this particular course, what we are discussing, we are discussing about the application of enzyme into the food industry, medical field, genetic engineering and the environment. And if you recall, in the previous module, we have discussed about the role of enzyme into the, in the food industry and as well as the medical field. And in this particular module, in our previous lecture, we have discussed about the role of enzyme into the medical field, how you can be able to utilize these enzymes for the development of different types of drugs for modulating the enzyme activity so that you can be able to control the uh, pathophysiology and other kinds of symptomatic effects. And you can also be able to treat the drugs, right? treat the disease. Apart from that, we have also seen that how the uh, different types of enzymes have the significant role in uh, drug metabolism and detoxifications. In the current le lecture, we are going to discuss about the role of enzyme into the environment and how the enzymes are playing crucial role into the environment. So when we talk about the role of enzyme into the environment, the enzyme is actually going to have the role in the different aspects related to the environment. For example, you can have the role of enzyme into the wastewater treatment, you can have the role in the enzyme in the bioremediations, you can have the role in into the paper and the pulp industry and you can also have the role into the biofuel productions. So when we talk about the bioremediations, you can have the breakdowns of the organic, organic pollutants, right? Breakdown of the oil spillages and so on. And that has been always been done by the in different types of enzymes such as the lacases, peroxidases, dehydrogenases, uh, P450, monooxygenases and so on. And then we have the breakdown of the oil spillages that has been done by the lipases. Uh, and these are the different thing what you can do in the wastewater treatment. So when we talk about the wastewater treatment, you can have the breakdown of the oil spillages, breakdown of the fat and oils, breakdowns of the proteins, breakdowns of starch and glycogens, removal of nitrogenous compounds, and that all been catalyzed by the different types of enzymes such as lipases, proteases, amylases, and nitrifying bacteria or denitrifying bacteria. Then we have the role of enzyme into the biofuel production. So you can have the breakdowns of the celluloses and dignoses, breakdowns of the starch and glycogens, the production of methane from the organic waste. This is being done by the different enzymes such as cellulases, amylases, and methanogens. Then we also have the role of enzyme into the paper and the pulp industry. So where you can have the breakdown of the lignin or the breakdown of cellulose. So breakdown of lignin is being catalyzed by the enzyme which is called as lignase and the breakdown of the cellulose is catalyzed by the enzyme of cellulase. So we are not going to discuss all these enzymes but we will take up few of the classical enzymes and how you can be able to uh, produce these enzymes, how you can be able to utilize these enzymes for, the, uh, for this particular purpose. So the first enzyme is the cellulases. So cellulases are the enzyme that hydrolyzes the glycosidic bond present into the cellulose, lignin cellulose and the hemicellulose. Cellulose is a crystalline matrix of linear beta 4 4 glucose hemicellulose compromises different compounds such as xylans, xyloglucons, arabinoglucons and the mannans forming a complex along with the substituents such as acetyl ester in its backbone. Hemicellulose and cellulose are the cell wall component of the plant where hemicellulose forms a hydrogen bond with the cellulose and other hemicellulose. 
thereby providing the mechanical strength and stability to the plant cells. In cellulose, the glucose molecules are unbranched and they form a linear polymer structure. Cellulolytic organisms such as TDC produces three major enzymes, namely the endogluconase, exogluconase, and the beta glucosidase or cellular biosases. Uh, endogluconase specifically cleaves the internal beta 1 4 D glycosidic bond of amorphous and solene glucose, releasing the glucose molecules, cellobiose, and cellulose. They can also hydrolyze the substituted cellulose such as carboxymethylcellulose and the hydroxyethylcellulose. Exogluconase, also known as the cellobiose hydrolysis, uh, hydrolyzes the cellobiose from the end of the polysaccharide chain and processes the high activity on the crystalline cellulose. Beta glucosidase cleaves the cellobiose and other glucosaccharides into the glucose, which is why much significant as cellobiose inhibits the action of many cellulases. These are the different types of products uh, what are being uh, developed uh, for. Uh, so you can have the carry enzymes. So these are the monocomponent alkaline celluloses. They are actually going to be produced by the hemocola insulin cellulase gene cloned in the express in the aspergillus oryza, and they are being used for the laundry detergent uh, products. Okay. Then you have the cellobricks. Cellobrix is a cellulose cellulobiose enzyme and it's actually going to be used in the food, juice and alcohol industry. Then we have the Cellulact which has a fungal cellulose and it is being produced by the Trichoderma reci and it is uh, required for several food and brewing industries. Then you have cellulose soft, cellulose dimes, all these enzymes and they all have the significant role in the different types of industries. Uh, and uh, we can have the uh, you know so you can actually be able to read go through with these uh, kind you know the role of these enzymes and other kinds of things and uh, so as far the sources is concerned if you want to develop the cellulo uh, cellulases cellulases are widely distributed in the nature among all terrestrial and fruit mineral organisms industrial cellulases are produced from the filamentous fungus which are found into the soil plants and marine environments Many studies have shown various fungi such as uh, thermophilic, uh, humicola, insolus, sporoticus, uh, mesophilic, aerobic, and the mesophilic anaerobic, and as well as so pseudom pseudomonas, fluorescence, and all that are actually going to be having a significant role in the production of the uh, cellulases. Few hyperthermophilic organisms such as Thermogota meritama or Thermogota neoportomelana, pyrococcus and the anaerobic cellus thermophilus are known to produce the thermostable celluloses and hemicelluloses. Nowadays, research is focusing on the development of novel strains and cellulose producing mutants or recombinant in order to increase the production and the yield with lesser downstream processing cost. How you are going to produce? So, celluloses are commercially produced by the many submerged fermentation techniques. The substrate selection for the cellulose production depends upon its about its intended use. The pure cellulose production, lactose and ammonium salts are being used as the carbon and the nitrogen source respectively. So, these are the details how you can be able to produce the cellulose into the submerged fermentations. Once you produce the cellulose into the organisms, you are actually going to isolate the cellulases and you are going to characterize the cellulases. So, cellulases are modular proteins comprising the catalytic domain and a small cellulose binding domain linked via O glycosidic uh, linker peptides. Cellulases is an inducible enzyme, therefore, compound like uh, cellulose, lactose, oligosaccharides, cellobiose. Sucrose and easily metabolizable carbohydrate act as a potent inducer. Cellulases are highly sensitive to their hydrolyzed products, which inhibits their activity. For example, cellobiose inhibits cellohydrolase and celluloconase. Glucose, xylose, fructose, galactose, maltose is observed to inhibit the beta, beta glucoside activity. 
product inhibition can be largely reduced by the fed back fed, fed batch fermentations the enzyme purification from the uh, SMP, smps culture involves the separation of culture fluid from the insoluble parts such as fungal malignant and media component using the rotatory vacuum filter and decant certifications this is followed by the ultra filtration of supernatant to achieve the concentration of the purification of the enzyme for long time storage the sugar alcohol such as sorbitol or sugar like lactose can be added to the liquid concentrates for laboratory purification of cellular cells ultra filtration gel filtration ion exchange chromatography fplc capillary electrophoresis can be used all these we have discussed in detail so you can actually be able to go through the content and you will understand that how you can be able to use the cellulases uh, you, how you can be able to use the different chromatography techniques to purify the cellulases now let's move on to the next enzyme and the next enzyme is the chitinases so chitinases are the enzyme which are actually going to degrade the uh you know the component which is called as chitin so chitinases are the group of hydrolytic enzyme that catalyzes the depolymerization of the chitin the degradation of chitin can be initiated by chitinases into the oligo n acetyl glucosamine chain the oligomers triglyceride nag and dinag are degraded into nag monomers by chitinobiolase and uh, nag monomers are metabolized form of chitin chitinases are first observed by bernard in 1911 while he was isolating a thermostable and dissolvable chitolytic fraction from the orchid pulps so question is what is the chitin okay so chitin is the second most abundant organic compound after cellulose it is a linear beta 14 homopolymer of nag nag is a natural re found into the shells of the crustaceans exoskeleton of the insects cell wall of the fungus microfauna and the plankton commercial sources of chitin are shrimps crabs and lobster naturally chitin is found in the proteins lipids pigments and the mineral like calcium carbonate therefore chitin preparation involves the demineralization and the deproteinization of chitin hcs based using the strong acid and bases now there are three different types of chitinases so you can have the endochitinases you can have the chitinobiase and then you can have the beta n acetyl glucosamine dase and the chitinobiase endochitinases are the random hydrolysis of the chain then we have the chitinobiase which hydrolyzes the terminal non reducing sugars and the beta n glucosidase is a successful removal of sugar unit from the non reducing ends chitinobiase or the chitinase bias are known as the exoglycosidase hydrolysis they remove the reducing sugar from the terminals on the basis of amino acid sequence of the glycosyl hydrolases chitinases and n acetyl glucosamines are grouped into three family three families 18 19 and 20 the family 18 and 90 consist of the endochitinases from sources like virus bacteria fungi insects and plants n acetyl hexosaminases from the vibro harvey and from the humans and the dictostelium dictogium are grouped into the family of 20 sources of the chitinases the organism that are capable of degrading chitin solely by the hydrolysis of glycosidic bonds are known as the chitinolytic organisms chitinases have been found in the wider group of organisms including the bacteria fungi plants digestive system of filentates nematodes polychaetes molluscs and uh, so products in the vertebrates pancreas and digestive mucosa of some insectivorous uh, fishes amphibians and reptiles insectivora birds and animals secrete the chitinases chitinolytic microbes are found abundantly in the nature which helps in the prevention of accumulation of polysaccharides from dead animals and fungi into the land and marine sediments the bacterial genera that produce catalytic enzyme includes the rubinos bacillus and cereatia 
Similarly, the streptomyces genera of ectomyces includes the chitolytic organisms and among fungi, trichoderma and aspergillus are popular chitinases producing organisms. Thermophilic microorganisms producing chitinases are Bacillus ligniformis, Bacillus BG11 and the streptococcus thermobilus and thermococcus chitinococcus. Then we, these are the different types of organisms which are producing the chitinases. So you can have the bacterial species, you can have the fungal species and all these are actually producing the chitinases which are having the applications either into the chitino oligosaccharide productions or the biocontrol agents or the protoplast generations or the generation of the fungal protoplast or biocontrol you know the chitin is sometimes present in the as a, as a component of the cell wall so if you use these uh, you know the, the chitinase from these organisms they are actually going to degrade the cell wall and that's how they are actually going to produce the protoplast then we also been used the biocontrol agents mosquito control single cell production protein productions and the chitin oligosaccharide productions how you are going to produce the chitinases? So the production of chitinase is inducible in nature which is enhanced by the presence of the colloidal chitin. It has been observed in streptomyces species that the presence of arabdenose double the enzyme production whereas glucose represents its synthesis. The effect of nitrogen has been seen on different microorganisms and reported that the peptone and the triptone are the suitable nitrogen sources for the chitinase productions. And uh, these are the, some of the conditions I have given so you can actually be able to go through the content and it will actually going to tell you that what are the conditions are uh, you know facilitating the production of chitinases. Then we have the purification and the characterizations. So the different techniques which are being used for the purification of enzymes are the ammonium sulfate precipitation, alcohol precipitation, DNA cellulose and the ST cephadex chromatography. Affinity chromatography is the most powerful technique for the purification of the chitinases. The extracellular chitinases obtained from the uh, showed an apparent KM value of 0.9 units against the N-style glucosamine equivalents and Vmax of 23.5 units N-style glucosamine per milligram of proteins. Thermostable chitinases from Bacillus species VG11 was found to be resistant against proteases and the allosmedin. Uh, so, what is the role and the application of the chitinases? So, chitinases are playing wide role, wide role, and are wide application in various industries such as pharmaceuticals and the clinicals. Chitinases are being used for the production of the chito oligosaccharides, which are used in the human healthcare. Chitinases are better biocontrol agent in terms of eco-friendly and soil pollution free approaches of controlling the insects as chemical insecticide and pesticides show a potent threat to the environment and as well as the killing the non-target organisms. Chitinases can be found species specific by the intervention of the biotechnology. Chitinases play a significant role in the in nutrition in the paras parasitism in bacteria and uh, morphogenetic uh, function in the fungi protozoa and invertebrates. Chitinases are also found to be associated with defense mechanisms in the plants and vertebrates. Chitinases are also found in the generation of fungal protoplast by de degrading the important component of the single fungal cell wall that is the chitin. Along with this, chitins are being used for controlling the mosquitoes, degradation of the uh, fish waste and the production of bioactive chitin oligosaccharides. So chitin is a very very important enzyme which actually can be used to control the uh, level of the chitin into the into the into the environment and that's how you can actually be able to control the many processes such as for example you can actually be able to control the mosquito production or mos level of mosquito because if you treat the uh, things with the chitinase it is actually going to degrade the uh, the cell wall or the exoskeleton of the these uh, microorganisms now let's move on to the next enzyme and the next enzyme is lipases 
So lipases are also known as the triacylcholesterol acyl hydrolase belonging to the hydrolase family or act on a carboxylic acid ester bonds. The physiological role of lipase is to hydrolyze the triglycerides into the diglycerides, monoglycerides, fatty acid and glycerol. The type of reaction catalyzed by lipases are esterification, acidolysis, transesterification, alcoholysis, aminolysis uh, along with hydrolysis on the basis of enantial selectivity and regioselectivity. They, do, they don't require any cofactor to function and processes the good regioselectivity, chemoselectivity and enantial selectivity. Regioselectivity means they are actually can be able to select even the within the lipid molecule which lipid they have to select. Chemoselectivity means they can actually be able to select the lipids molecule based on the chemical groups and the enantial selectivity means they can actually be able to even select the isomeric forms of the lipids. Lipid exhibits the broad substrate specificity and can be found optimal activity at a varying temperatures. Uh, sources, so lipases are found in animal, plants and microorganisms. The commercial lipases are majorly produced by the yeast, fungi and bacteria due to the fact that they are rarely cultivable. Pancreatic lipase which are found in the pancreatic juices are obtained from the human and pig pancreas. This enzyme is the most studied and well documented among all other lipases. Lipases obtained from the pseudomonas are of special interest to the biotechnologists as they exhibit versatility, reactivity and stability in a non-interest environment. For lipid modifications, lipases from the rhizopus are being widely used. Lipases obtained from the shows preferential activity for fatty acid containing a cis-9 double bond, whereas those obtained from the riboses are active against the ester of the primary alcohol. Uh, productions, so the different fermentation technique employed for the uh, production of the enzymes are the submerged fermentation techniques or the cellular immobilization techniques and there are specific culture conditions for the lipases so you can have the microbial cultures liporeal lipo production affected by the different factors such as carbon source nitrogen source physiological factors such as temperature ph uh, aerations, agitation, size and age of the inoculum. Lipases are the enzyme which are part of the secondary metabolism of organism as they help in microbes in utilizing the lipid present in the extracellular environment by hydrolyzing them. Therefore, lipase production is inducible in nature which is induced by the fat or oil into the culture condition. But few microorganisms such as pseudomonas uh, does not require induction, it expresses the enzyme constituted gene. Then we have the purification and the characterization. So generally four steps of chromatography are required for the purification of lipases. Lipases which are obtained from the animal or hair plant require more steps for purification in comparison to those obtained from the microbial sources in order to obtain the same purity loyalty. Pre-purification steps involved in the separation of the cellular debris from media which is obtained by centrifugation or filtration. Enzyme concentration is carried out by the ammonium sulfate precipitation or by ethanol or ethone by alta filtration. Chromatographic techniques such as ion exchange which is uh, followed by the hydrophobic interaction chromatography and the gel filtration chromatography. The choice of chromatography majorly depend on the characteristics of the enzyme such as uh, uh, isolectic point, polarity, molecular size of the enzyme. The step sequence is decided by the considering sample volume, protein concentration, viscosity of the sample, degree of protein needed, presence and absence of nucleic acid or the protolytic enzyme and easy to wash out the absorbent from the contaminants. Then we also can talk about the another enzyme which is called as the pectinases. Pectinases are the enzyme which are actually going to uh, degrade the very important cellular component of the cell wall which is called as pectin, right? So these are the group of at least seven enzymatic activities that contribute to the pectin, uh, breakdown of the pectin from a variety of plants. Pectinases obtained from the natural indigents have been used in the production of coffee and the chocolates where pectinases obtained from the microbes are used for the removal of mucilages in the fermentations. 
It is widely used in the juice and wine industry, extensively used in food industry to accelerate the juice clarification and to produce the juice concentrate from the grapes, berries, ears, apples, carrot, beets, green peppers and the citrus fruits. It is also used to increase the color of juice promoting the antioxidant formation and favor the extraction of the color of juice favors components, flavor components, etc. Also help in the removal of inner wall of lotus seed, garlic, almonds and peanuts. Sources, the most common source of pectinases is the filamentous fungus aspergillus species which is produces the pectinolytic enzymes, de-sterifying and the chain splitting enzymes. Also done from the tomato and oranges and there are other organisms also which are also known to produce the pectinases. Uh, in the production, you can actually have the uh, submerged uh, fermentations and you can also have the solid state fermentations. As far as the purification is concerned, the pectinases produced from the different organisms are first concentrated by precipitating the crude extract with the ammonia sulfate. Then you have the ultra filtration followed by the different steps of gel filtration, affinity chromatography, ion exchange chromatography and uh, employed to produce the homogeneous enzyme extracts. Various columns that are used for the purification of pectinases are Cephacryl S200, CM Cephadex, Cephadex G50, CM52, Cephadex G100, Biogel P60, DA cellulose, CM cellulose, phenyl sulfurose, HR555. An aqueous two-phase system can also be used to purify the enzyme with different uh, pectinolytic activities from a commercial enzyme preparations. Uh, so microbial uh, pectinases are the complex group of polymer sp uh, spitting enzymes that break down the homogalactourinane and pectin regions. Widely used in the food industry in the wine and uh, fruit juice processing. There is a need of comprehensive set of models for pectinase regulation that can help in increasing the yield at the industrial level. As the concentration of the carbon source has inhibitory effect of the enzyme synthesis, newer studies can be performed on the production of enzyme using the feedback fermentations. Uh, the regulatory phenomena such as industrial induction repression or the activation inhibition can be different in the submerged culture and the herd state fermentations. Therefore, it is need of the hour to study the significance of enzyme related to the degradation of degradation or the modification of the hairy regions. Novel microbial strain or genetically modified strain can be developed and studied for the higher production of these enzymes using the solid state fermentation processes. So this is all about the enzyme applications into the food industry, into the medical field, into the genetic engineering and into the environment. If you recall genetic engineering, the role of enzyme into the genetic engineering, we have discussed in detail when we are talking about how you can be able to use a clone in the enzyme, how you can actually be able to do the polymer, uh, you know, PCR and all other kinds of things. So that's why I have not taken that part and discussed in this particular module. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here in our uh, and uh, in this lecture, we have discussed about the role of enzyme into the food industry, medical field and the environment and as well as the genetic engineering. And since this is the last lecture of this particular course, uh, we have already been discussed in detail about uh, the various aspects of the enzymes we have discussed about. We started very basic with a very basic basic information about what are the enzymes, how the enzymes are facilitating the conversion of the substrate into the product and so on. And then we have also discussed about the nomenclature and classifications and so on, the mechanism of enzyme actions and then we also discuss how you can be able to solve the structure of the enzyme. So we discuss about the experimental method and where we have discussed about the NMR and as well as the X-ray crystallography. And then we also discuss about the non-experimental methods. So we discuss about the uh, molecular modeling and how you can be able to use the modular line ver uh, version 9 to model the enzyme and how you can be able to test or validate whether the modeled enzyme is of good quality or not. 
Subsequent to that, we have also discussed about how you can be able to study the enzyme catalyzed reactions, what are different types of reactions. So, we discuss about the carbohydrate metabolism, we discuss about the beta oxidations, amino acid metabolisms, and so on. And subsequent to that, we have also discussed about how you can be able to study the enzyme substrate interactions. So, we discuss about the spectroscopic approaches such as the different spectroscopy, we discuss about the, uh, the uh, the ITC, we discuss about the SPR and so on. And once we understand all these, we discuss about the uh, how you can be able to study the kinetics of the enzyme substrate interactions, how you can be able to develop the enzyme assays and how you can be able to develop the enzyme inhibitors. And once we have developed all these, we have discussed about the significance of the enzyme into the uh, human welfare and how you can be able to use the enzyme for the different aspects of the, uh, the applications. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here and I hope that you might have liked the content of this particular course and you will could get some, uh, you know, you it could have been beneficial for you for the long run. So with this, I would like to uh, conclude my lecture here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.